Welcome to the Main Zone. I am Jermaine. Thank you for tuning in my podcast. Wherever you are, however you're listening, I appreciate it. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or watching on YouTube. Uh, it's funny. I've, I've done enough of these episodes. Well, before I say that, keep liking, keep subscribing, keep sharing um, as we grow the platform. It's it's appreciated. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed last week's interview with my mom. Or a few weeks ago, my last episode, I should say, with my mom. Had a great time uh, doing that with her. She had a lot of fun. She shared a lot of her life journey, wisdom along the way. Hopefully, anyone that, that listened to that took something, took something from it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a, it a lot of fun. So much fun that uh, she's we're discussing having her on monthly to do like a mom mom moment or something along those lines. But uh, thanks again, mom, for the awesome interview. It was my first person I interviewed on my podcast. Uh, much appreciated. I had a great, great time uh, doing it. So moving on, today we're going to be discussing uh, NBA Finals preview, uh, where I was right, where I was wrong in my my playoff predictions. But first, before we get to that, we got to get to some of the news. Uh, we'll start with uh, very sad news. As, as everybody knows, I, I live in San Antonio. So Uvalde, Texas is, is a short distance from here. And last week, uh, 19 kids and two adults were, were killed in a elementary school. Uh, I, I'm, I'm an educator. I work in education. I have for the past eight years now. And there's no words that can describe uh, what those families are going through, what the community over in Uvalde is going through. It's such a senseless act uh, to kill uh, for no reason. I don't, I don't have all the facts to speak on. You know what took people so long to to enter the police to enter and and all those things, but it's that's not that's not what I'm here to discuss right now. It really is the have your thoughts and prayers to those families. Uh, I don't know what to do about um, a school shooting. I mean, it's just sad. It, it's 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 incredibly sad. Uh, and then ask, you know, I was reading some people are asking teachers to be armed and things. And we already have enough on our plate because, you know, teaching today is not like not to sound, you know, um, frustrated. But uh, teaching today is like you're a teacher, but then also you're a counselor and you're a parent. Then you're a motivator. Then you are a first aid person. Then you are, you're everything, you know, it's, it's so much to then ask teachers to also protect students uh, is, a, is a big, big ask for anyone. I just pray for those families in, in Uvalde. You know, none of them knew that the, the day that the shooting happened, that they had awards day there on their campus. It was the last time that those parents would see their children or their grandchildren. Um, it's senseless, sad, and frustrating. I mean, to be quite honest, that um, that these things still happen in schools. Schools should be safe at all times. It's a place of learning. It's a place where our next generation of kids go to gain social skills, to learn to gain friends and to have a um, small community like Uvalde suffer such a loss is, is very troubling, very frustrating. Um, but prayers to those, to those families there, prayers to that community. Again, um, I move on after that. Um, but I just, I had to start off with that because it's, it's, it's just a sad, sad, sad situation. Staying with, uh, well, before I move on to another part of education or, and other, other, other news, um, I think that's, I think if you know the backstory of Steve Kerr, when his, um, during his pregame 
his post game interview um, last week when the Warriors were playing the Mavs. His frustration and passion and plea um, for lawmakers or decision makers to, to make changes in gun policy stems from his own history. Uh, for those that don't know, his father was a uh, university professor. He was gunned down in Beirut, 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 and when he was 18 years old, his father was shot in the head twice, in the back of the head. Uh, so for him, I think it was a, a moment that triggered him that, you know, again, because his father was innocent, you know, and just people came into the school and shot him in the head, and, and that was it. And he was a 18-year-old um, college student at the University of Arizona. So I think his plea, when if, you, if, if any of you all saw that interview, was from a space of, of, of frustration of, of violence, of gun violence, because it, it's happened to him. And then he sees, you know, four and a half, five hours away in a small town in Texas that, that 19 young people and two adults were, were killed. And then the very sad news of one of the teachers that was killed, her husband a few days later had a heart attack and passed away and they had four children. Like, man, just... Again, I don't want to stay on this, you know, but it's true. I mean, it's, it's sad. Prayers for all those families. Thank you, Steve Kerr, for using your platform uh, to voice your your opinion. That's what we're all entitled to. So thank you, Steve Kerr, for that. More sad news, though, coming in, in this time in the world of sports. If you know um, Cowboy fans, Marion Barber uh, passed away. He's only 38 years old. If y'all remember him, he played, you know, back in 06, 07, around there for the Cowboys as a bruising running back, marrying the Barbarian. Um, I was a fan. I was a fan. Um, but sad to hear that he passed. Prayers for him. Prayers for his family. More positive note, sticking with school, though, is uh, all the high school graduates that are graduating soon or, you know, this week in America. Special congrats to my students. This is my second graduating class um, at, the, at, the, at the school that I work at. I'm proud of you all. I would call you all by name, but I don't think that's something that any of y'all want to hear or most of y'all don't even watch or listen to my podcast. Those that do, though, um, congrats on graduating. Proud of you. Keep pushing forward. As I've always I've tried to be an example to you all of grit, perseverance, and being tough. And hopefully some of the things I've told you over the years resonate. And when you have those dark times in your life, which we all do, uh, you, will re you will remember them and push forward. Uh, proud of this group. Wish you all nothing but success. Uh, and I'll, I always say, don't let high school be the best time of your life. If high school is the best time of your life, your life's not that good. Not to be me, not to be me, but high school shouldn't be the highlight of our lives at all. There's so much more out there, so much more going on, so much more to be thankful for. Uh, so a special group of kids that are graduating here next week, actually our graduation is next week. Um, I got to know them really well this year. Lots of them I've been with since, the, since they were in the sixth grade. Uh, so I've grown and learned and, you know, hopefully, you know, been someone that they can look up to. I will apologize if I've ever hurt anyone's feelings. I'm sorry. I had a group of girls tell me the other day we were discussing like the last two days of school. They were saying I got, I was a lot meaner back in the day. So for that, I'm sorry. Um, and I don't think I was mean. I think I've I, I was probably mean, I should say that, but I think I've grown. And so that's why it comes across as if I'm no longer uh, mean. But congrats, class of 2022. Uh, congrats, all graduates of 2022. Keep moving forward. Uh, you're the next group to come through. Um, you know, 
work on your dreams, write them down, set some goals, and, and knock them out. Big shout out. Uh, he's, I know he doesn't listen to my podcast, but I listen to his. I had to say this. It's not even on my like agenda tonight. But Jay Shetty, man, your podcast is amazing. It's, you know your podcast is good. When instead of scrolling through to find a subject that you want to listen to or, or find someone that you want to listen to, like like he's interviewing somebody, you literally just push play on any of them that are on, on his uh, platform and you just listen. I mean, fantastic content, top to bottom, words of wisdom, great perspective. Um, the way he interviews people is amazing. The questions that he asks, it just, just, I just want to thank him. I've been listening to his podcast. My wife has as well, but I've been listening to his podcast for a couple of weeks now. And it's, like I said, it's just, I'm mowing the grass and, one goes off and then another one pops on and I don't even check to see what it is. I just keep listening. So huge, huge thank you for giving me some, uh, some real life lessons on, on just being a better person. So I, I am thankful for that. I appreciate your podcast. All right, so let's get to, well, oh man, I almost forgot. Uh, two of my high school kids that are graduating are going to be heading to Oakwood University, my alma mater. So I am actually proud of that. Um, I think <laughs> I think they're going to be uh, shocked when they get to Huntsville. But um, very proud of the two young men that will be heading out to Huntsville. Uh, I think they'll do some great things there. Looking forward to visiting them and hearing how, how things are going out there. Okay, so let's go first where, where I got it right, where I got it wrong in the playoffs. S start from the very beginning. My bad, Boston. I didn't think you were up in the finals. If you watch my, my NBA playoff preview podcast or listen to it, I had uh, Brooklyn beating Boston. I just, the greatness of KD and Kyrie, I just figured were just overwhelm um, Boston, but it didn't. Uh, head coach. Doka is fantastic in not just knowing the X's and O's of the game, but the way he's able to communicate with his players and get gain their trust, get the most out of them, let them play free, but also play with 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 um, poise. The way he holds them accountable, I'm going on and on and on. He saw in that first series, I mean, he basically made Steve Nash look like an obsolete coach. The switches they're making, the counters they're making defensively on how to guard uh, Kevin Durant. Um, it was beautiful to watch. So I was wrong, completely wrong about that. I didn't have the Warriors making the finals because I had Phoenix, I believe, uh, beating Dallas. And then Dallas crushes Phoenix, so they end up with the Warriors. So um, I was wrong in some spaces. I was wrong. Injuries do play a part of it, um, but that's no excuse. I had Milwaukee making it to the finals, and there was no Chris Middleton, so Boston disposed of them. So here we go. We got the Warriors, who had to go through Denver, Memphis, and then Dallas to get to the finals. And then you had the Celtics, Boston, who went through Brooklyn, Milwaukee, and then Miami. So very different roads. I know a lot of analysts are saying, well, the um, Warriors had an easier road. I don't know, man. Brooklyn didn't have Ben Simmons. You know, they struggled all year. I just thought sheer talent would just overwhelm them, like I said. And then Milwaukee was out Middleton. And then Miami, no hero. He's really, like, not to knock Tyler Hero, but he's more of a third guy than or fourth guy than a second guy. Jimmy Butler playing fantastic, but he can't get it done by himself. So I, I, I look at that as a wash at, at the roads that they had to take to get to the finals. So I'm not gonna go that far and say that the Warriors just had a cakewalk and 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 Boston had to, uh, to fight, scratch and claw the way there. If anything, it shows that the Warriors know how to handle business and get it done. And the Celtics um, showing a little bit of their youth. Let's just put it that way. So let's just go top to bottom, starting with the starters. See who has the edge. Okay, so. 
Warriors are going to start first. They get home court, so they'll start off in Oakland, but then they get or sorry, San Francisco. So then they have Curry, Clay, Wiggins, Draymond, and Looney starting. Uh, the Celtics will start Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Al Horford, and Robert Williams. So top to bottom starters. Curry's got the edge on the defensive player of the year. I mean, Marcus Smart is great, but offensively, Curry, I don't know where they're going to start Smart at. We might guard Clay, and then just, just run traps and blitzes at Curry. But um, let's go head-to-head -head matchups. All right, Curry. At the two, uh, Clay or Jalen Brown. Almost a wash. Almost, because you never know if Clay gets it going. And then... Jalen Brown's kind of up and down, so let's call that a wash. Wiggins and Tatum, Tatum, not even close. Well, sorry, not I should say not even close. I just rolled with Tatum. Green and Horford, slight edge to Green. Uh, he knows his role, and he knows how to win. And then Looney and Williams, it depends on how available Williams is. You know, he's been hobbled by that knee, so we'll see how he does. The bench, I mean, they got Otto Porter. And Jordan Poole, Gary Payton Jr. will be a key for the Warriors if he's able to play. And then for the Celtics, you got Derek White and really their um, and Joe Williams. So I give I give the edge. Let's call that a watch. Let's just say the benches are a watch. Okay. So let's go to coaching. Coaching. Steve Curry, y'all. He's got eight titles. Three as a coach. Five as a player. He knows how to get the most out of his players. He knows how to motivate, communicate. Uh, same with though, Yudoka. He knows how to motivate, communicate. Uh, great at adjustments. More so, both guys. Like, I'd say coaching. When you're coaching the finals or you coach an NBA team at this level, everybody has X's and O's. It mainly boils down to how do you manage egos? How do you manage your timeouts? How do you motivate your players? How do you hold your best players accountable? How do you manage the noise, so to speak? Those things matter. X and O's is there. All this current and they both know it. They both got the X and O's down. It's take Kerr. Let's go Kerr first. Uh, he knows what what buttons to push with the Warriors. He knows how to let Draymond be Draymond, then reel him in when needs. He knows how to hold his best players accountable. So once you hold your best player accountable, everybody else falls in the line. And then take Boston. Y'all got to remember, Boston in January, Boston was basically out the playoffs. Then went on a great run to end the season, but through all that noise. Udoka stayed the course. You got to remember, Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, not beef, but they were, you know, displaying some frustration. He let it be, you know, he handled it inter internally. Um, when things weren't going well, he challenged his players to play better in key moments, um, gain their trust, and in gaining their trust, look where they're at now. But I got to give an edge to Kerr. In coaching because one his team guys on his team have played in 123 finals games Celtics have played in zero so that's that's edge and two he's been there Kerr has been through these moments where uh, everything is amplified you know your adrenaline's going through your chest uh, I think he know, he's better suited to calm his players. And those guys are a little bit older, so they like to calm themselves. So um, with all that being said, uh, I'm still, I want, I, I'm going to go with Boston. I'm going to go with Boston. I don't think it's going to be five games. I'm going to go Boston in six. But if it goes, if they don't win in six, the Warriors will win in seven. I don't, I, I don't see Boston beating them in Game Seven at, at, in in San Francisco. But I think they match up well. I think the difference is the 
Celtics have two guys that can get their own shot. So when the Warriors will load up on Luka and let everybody else just do their best, but their best is not like elite, elite. I think if they do the same thing, Brown or Tatum can take them home. I think Tatum's on a mission to prove that he is one of the best players in this game. And I have a feeling that it depends on, I'm not trying to put it on the refs, but if the refs let these guys play, then I think it better suits the uh, the Celtics if they level play if the refs let them play with a little bit of physicality. I think it suits the uh, the Celtics more. They're great defensively. Uh, I think they could play small. They can go small with the Warriors. They can play Horford at the five, Tatum at the four, uh, Jalen at the three, or Grant Williams at the three or the four. Uh, so it's not like they can't match up if the Warriors go with their small lineup with Poole, Clay, and um, Curry with Wiggins and Green. It's fine. The um, Celtics can actually match up with that. So I think that matters. So I think it's going to be a very entertaining series. First time these two teams have matched up in the finals since Wilt and Chamberlain battled back in the day. But I think it's going to be a fantastic series for the NBA. If you noticed... Um, it will allow, if the Warriors win, you really got to have a conversation about where, where Steph ranks in the uh, list of all-time greats. That'll be four titles, two MVPs. He'll probably be the finals MVP, even though he should have got one a few years ago. Uh, so, huge opportunity for the Warriors. Huge opportunity for Clay. I mean, think about it. Mentally, what he had to battle back from. Tears his Achilles, then tears his... Burton on first tears his ACL, then tears his Achilles out two, two full seasons and to make it back to this space. I, I, I remember the interview right after they won the Western Conference Finals, and you could see it in them that the, 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 the moment of like, man, I made it. Like, ah. those injuries can derail a career, you can mess with your psyche. But he stayed mentally tough, and he's made it back to the to the finals and the Warriors are back as if it they didn't skip a beat. Once they got Clay back, things started turning. Uh, Wiggins is a X factor for them because his ability to get his own when he needs to. He can get his own shot when he needs to. But I was still going to go with Boston in six. Uh, looking forward to a great series though and I'll be on. If, win or lose, I'll be on to discuss it. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> I'm right. But if not, Hey, congrats to the Warriors if they win. Congrats to Boss if they win. But great, great opportunity for both guys. As you can see, my Kobe picture right there. Great opportunity for uh, Tatum to follow his idol and get that title. Uh, as you saw in Game 7 in Miami, huge Kobe fan. Huge Kobe fan. So, um, again, just looking for a fantastic series. I'll be on next week to discuss some more. Get ready for my Father's Day interviews coming up. As always, like, subscribe, share, comment, post, repost. Just help me uh, continue to grow this platform. It's been fun so far. Uh, again, thank you all for the have been listening. And as always, be blessed. I'm out.